Got a white bear on my roster, he be feeding me pasta and lobster He just hit me up on Tuesday like, what's doing, babe, let me take you shopping I told him, well, I'm a little busy, he said, damn, I'm in your city But anyway, it's okay, hope you have a good day, I'ma see you by 50. Then I told him, you treat me so well, he said, can't shop for sale Matter of fact, scratch that, I'ma see you with that, just cause you fine as hell And I told him, well, thank you, baby, anything for my favorite lady Well, I gotta go, they just let me know that I could pick up a Mercedes Hello, hello, it's your girl T Nasty, and you're tuned in to Nasty Closet Podcast Thank you for taking this step into the closet where you're in a safe space to share your deepest, most inner thoughts and viewpoints. I'm here with Viral Sensation, Devo. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. For real. I'm surprised you like reached out to me because I really remember you from <laughs> high school. Like yeah. I remember you from Warm Star. I remember you from uh, Vine. Yeah. Everybody was sharing your stuff and doing their own little like retake to it. But before we get into that. I always like to like take a shot or a drink before we start the show. Like, for sure, let's do it. Okay, so you taking a shot or we? I'm gonna take a shot first. Oh God, he trying to start off like I'm real like. Shot first. He said, "Let's just Maybe get into it." Put some food on my stomach. I, I ain't put no food in my stomach, oh, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> I have to do a lot of stuff today. I have to keep get it going, like. No, I'd be like that. You'll be all right. And then I have to push our little session back that 30 minutes because my hair was running late. Shout out to my hairstylist. Yeah, she did Brand that Brand ambassador for my girl. Y'all go check her out. Bless the water. Y'all need a bless the wine bottle. It's wine. <laughs> it's, it's just wine. Oh, yeah. Well, you got cups? Mm-hmm. Right here. And I got shot glasses. The shot glasses is in the cup. Oh, you got the whole shebang bang. Yeah, I make sure I stay ready so we don't have to get ready. Oh, my chase is in there too, but... I got my chaser right here. I don't see how people can chase with water. That's the best thing to chase your liquor with, honestly. Cause you I'm going to shake it. Like, <laughs> I ain't got no food in my system. It's okay. Because I'm about, after this, I'm about to go give me a nice meal, okay? For sure. Oh, I got my chaser. My chaser right here. I got my lemonade. What's up, lemonade? Yes, it's my lemonade. My girl calling, but I can't answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not my girl, but my friend. <laughs> she calling. Sure, yeah. No, but some people don't know what I mean because right? I buy. So, shit, it was still his body language. You could tell off of, like, just the way you said it. Oh yeah. It sounded like you was talking about a homegirl. Yeah, my homegirl. She calling me. She. We was trying to get a session going, but they closing. So we didn't like if we we got our hour, they would be closing by the time. So we wouldn't even get an hour. We'd probably get thirty minutes if I right. didn't tell her to come. So I was like, no, we would just do it for another time. But she was one. She was one of the first people on my podcast. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. She was the first girl. But okay, so let's do cheers. I'm not fucking with you with the Don first. <laughs> we gonna get to some stuff. Then I'm gonna get to Don. I said some wine with you too. Whole time. Okay, you want some? Yeah. I I get you some. I got you. This is my favorite wine too. Okay, he wants shot in. I usually have games. Like I usually come up with games to play on here, but I might. I got a couple games. I got a wine glass with a skull. Because I, I sure. wanted yours to be manly. I didn't want you to have no girly class. Okay. Everybody <laughs> likes this wine when I give it to them. You ever had it? Stella Rose, yeah. Stella Rose before. Yeah. Stella Rose Black, yeah. Stella Rose Black before. Yeah, yeah, for fire. Sure. Fire. Okay, so are you originally from Arizona? Mm -mm. Where are you from? Because I knew, I was like, he, I, I know you ain't from here. <laughs> yeah, I've been out here since I was 18, though. Um, okay. I'm from Chicago, and then I moved out here right after high school. Mm -hmm. Went to ASU for a semester and a half. So how, like, okay. So when you moved out here at 18, was it like a huge difference from Chicago? 100%. Like culture shock? I was culture shock like a month. Yeah, like, me I had too. A, I'm I had from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, so. Yeah. How long you been on? Eight since I was eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Midwest people is different. <laughs> Way real. different. Nah, for real. How long? How How do you like Arizona though? Do you? I feel like it's good to do what you want to do as far as aspirations. If you have dreams and stuff, I feel like it's just like L. A. and mm -hmm. just like Vegas, but half the cost. So I feel that. I like it. Yeah, I don't like Did you like come it. out with anybody or? <laughs> no, um, my parents or? moved us out here originally in high school, and then I just decided to stay. All my everybody else moved away. Like, all, I don't have no family here. Oh, all my tough. siblings moved back. My parents moved to Houston, so yeah, I have no family. You have family here? Yeah, I moved out here with my family. All your family came. Yeah, oh, my mom, my dad, my little sisters, grandma. 
That's what's up. I wish. Yeah. I have to keep going back to see these people. Nah, I mean, hey, you got a reason to be on the road. Right. Oh, that shit, that shit do get tiring. Can yeah. I curse? I curse right? Yeah. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know how some people be. Yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> when you first, when you first, before you moved out here, your video that everybody know you for originally, mm. yo, mmm. <laughs> do you call it a mmm challenge or what? Yeah, it's what like is a it? Mmm freestyles. Mmm freestyles. Yeah. Okay, because I remember other people was doing stuff to it too. Yeah. And. Then it just took like took over by itself, like, yeah. and you got eighty million views on YouTube from yeah. that, just from that yeah. video. Well, how did that come about? Like, how did you guys like just decide? Oh, we just about to do this little freestyle in the middle mm -hmm. of the hallway. Yeah, the first video we did, we um, so we was all on the track team for our high school. Mm -hmm. So at the track practice, we were just in the locker room chilling, and then the one that's in the red jacket in the first video mm -hmm. that say the last line. He, it was his idea. He, uh, he said, "Let's do this. Let's do this hmm freestyle. We'll be this basically freestyle. We got to say hmm between each bar." So we was really freestyling at first. We were just saying shit. We wasn't like recording it at first, mm -hmm. but then we started saying shit that was like, "Actually, I right, we should record this." So we had uh, turn the camera on, actually recorded it, and then we posted on Twitter. And then had got his E-man, the uh, one in the red jacket. He posted on his Twitter, and um, his phone was just going up. Like we were still with each other when he posted it, his phone started going crazy. Before we know it, it hit like <clears throat> hit like mil a million views the first day, and then we just said we, we gotta keep going for real. Did you expect it to blow up like that? I didn't. You just did something <coughs> fun with your friends. You guys yeah. all keep in touch still? Yeah, we still keep in touch. How old were you when that video was created? I was 18. So you were like a senior in high school. Senior in high school, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. So what made you guys decide? Oh, we gotta sh actually shoot a video for this. Like shoot uh, a professional video. Yeah. Um. So we had a lot of people that was supporting us. Like it was a lot of people that was in the industry that was saying like giving us advice and just telling us where to go with it. And they said like the main thing they told us was to monetize it. So since mm -hmm. we had the videos, that was cool. But we wasn't making money from the videos. We had to actually make a song, mm -hmm. make a video for that. You know what I'm saying? So it took us some time. Like at first we was trying to make different hmm songs, and we was like. It, 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 we had made like two or three songs like for the like with the hmm concept mm -hmm. but we ended up going with the decision to just record the lines that we said on the video over a beat and then put that out and that's but that's when, uh, when I seen the original video and then I seen the one that you guys actually did a professional video to you guys mm -hmm. added some things just yeah. a little extra stuff yeah but for the most part most of the lines were the same yeah for sure for sure. Did you guys ever think like let's make it, us into a group or anything like that of that sort? Like yeah, yeah, we was a group. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We still are a group, but we're not active right now. You know what I'm saying? Like we, the main reason we're not active is because uh just different states, locations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just we but still cool on good terms. I feel like know. you, you're you're my age, probably like twenty three, yeah, twenty seven. What? I'm 27. Why do you look so young? <laughs> I mean, 27 thing. is still young for yeah. a male. Like, y'all are young. Y'all very young. I'm creeping up on 30 like a That woman. don't matter. 30s is, 30s, I feel like 30s is prime it's for lit. men. It's lit. Yeah, for real. For yeah, men, y'all still look good at 30. Y'all still look young at 30. Like, for women, it's different. We age, like, twice as fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie. We live age twice as fast as men. I be meeting men that are in their 30s, and I still be thinking I was 25. No, I and they be acting like they 25. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did you... If you can go back and, I guess, capitalize different off of this video, mm -hmm. would you do things differently, or do you feel like everything happened for a reason? Yeah, I would have did things differently for sure. Everything happens for a reason, like... If I had the decision to go back in time and change anything, I wouldn't. Because I feel like I'm satisfied with where everything is at right now. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to change something that changes how things are right now drastically. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't go back and change anything at all. But it is some things I would have did differently for sure. Like with the knowledge I got now. It's just I'm not looking at it like going back and fixing anything. I'm like, it's still an opportunity now. <clears throat> still an opportunity now to do things differently. I just got to get the... What's the word I'm with? Appeal. It's mm -hmm. like that's the main thing as an artist you want to get is appeal. When mm -hmm. you just got a bunch of bunch of people that rock out with you, a fan base, you know what I'm saying? A lot of support, and that's kind of hard to get. I took a look at your newest music, mm -hmm. and it's way different than what you started. Yeah, because sure. mm, it's basically it's like it, it's giving it's me like drill rap. Me. 
Yeah, it's giving like parody drill rap, yeah, like the yeah. beat is kind of drillish. Yeah. But the newest song that I seen on your page that you posted, it's like mm -hmm. more of like spoken word type yeah. rap. Like, yeah. so how did you make that transition? And do you feel like that's your new niche? Basically, that's your new mm -hmm. vibe that you're on right now. How do you? Yeah. So I, go I, from that to this. I wrote poetry since like third grade. Like I was in poetry competitions and all type. I, I went to a state competition for a poem I wrote in fourth grade. Um, so when I started rapping, I started rapping my senior year in high school. Like that was when I really started writing songs and recording in the studio. Up until that point, I always wrote poetry. So I, I kind of had a niche for that always. So like it's the same thing, you got to rhyme, you know, but like when I first started with the group, we had this identity where it was like we was rapping this certain kind of way so the style that I had didn't really fit mm -hmm. the what we was doing with the group so right. I was doing my thing with them but now that I'm on my solo shit I'm actually trying to be more myself mm -hmm. and I um <clears throat> those videos was like when I was 18 I'm 27 now right so all this time I've been rebranding you know what I'm saying where it's like I don't want to be a comedian rapper or like mainly known as a joke, you know what I'm saying, like I was already Skip doing with the, type, you know what I'm yeah. saying, I want to actually be taken seriously, so with this new music I'm putting out, that's kind of what I'm going for, just actually more substance behind the words and actually talking about shit that's not derogatory and shit like that. I do like your new music, I don't know how to lie, I, I, I played like it. it, and I was like, this is something I could listen to, because I'm not, I'm a girl, I don't listen yeah. to all that rada rada kill kill, mm -hmm. like, it's cool to listen to in the club and stuff, but I'm a type of girl who listen to like, J. Cole, and yeah. I listen to Kendrick, and I listen yeah. to, um, the old school Nas, that's the type of stuff I listen to, I like to listen to stuff with a message. Do you feel like that's like your that's your ammo now? Mm -hmm. You want you want every something of more substance and 100%. message now. I got like I say at least fifty songs done, and majority of those songs I'm really proud of the words I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I don't have any regrets, or I don't look at it like it's just stupid. What am I talking about? Right. Like I do it. Moon raps, like. Yeah, because it's like you. Know, some some people rap about stuff that they don't even live. You know, exactly. they just rapping yeah. it because it sounds good. It's cool and exactly. And that's so. I don't want to fall under that category. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm always I'm about being genuine and real. So if my main passion, I'm making money off of an uh, image that mm -hmm. or a facade that mm -hmm. it's not who I am, my identity. That's gonna tear me apart. So that's why with my music now, I'm trying to make sure I'm coming in a way that's actually me. Even with the songs, I'm not talking about love. I'm talking about whatever it is, like the lifestyle I live and all that, I'm still saying things that fall under what I'm doing in real life, you know what I'm saying? There's not really any lines where I feel like I can't connect it to what I'm really doing in real life, you know what I'm saying? Right, and sometimes when you are putting on a facade as a artist, you end up, it's not a facade anymore. Exactly. You're living that, even if you don't even like... Yeah, that's cause true. Let, let's say, I'm going to bring Tupac into the mix. Mm -hmm. Tupac was not... A hood yeah. nigga at first. He, he was, was not. He was very intelligent. He was still intelligent mm -hmm. throughout his career, but he was more in um, uh, arts. In in yeah. arts, he was in school of arts yeah, and stuff like that. Picket. Yeah. So he wasn't until he started rapping about that stuff. Like he started sure attracting look. those p type of people and started really living that life. Exactly. At first, he wasn't. At first, you. I feel like rapping is like basically like spiritual wording you, yeah. you you say it and then you attract it it's just like yeah. manifestation you talk mm -hmm. about rada kill kill you gonna end up rada rada kill killing mm -hmm. like and that's why a lot of people should be careful about what they rap because it's kind of spell casting in my opinion yeah, yeah you're like, right you you're invoking in a different type of energy mm -hmm. when you rap that stuff why do you think all the rappers that rap that stuff are always in bs mm -hmm. or always have the people around them dying exactly yeah it's because they're invoking the, those type of energies yeah and rap, like, the the origin of rap was always kind of, like, conflictive, where you dissing the next crew and talking about how dope your crew is or the shit you kicking out compared to the next the next dude, what he kicking out. It's, it's like a comparison thing where, and when you bring comparisons into it, people's feelings are going to get hurt, and mm -hmm. you don't know what a person will do when they feelings get hurt. You know what I'm right. saying? So, like, talking now, like, dudes talking about, I fucked your baby mama, you a drug addict, shit like that, like... Mm -hmm you can't really think that we gonna go far in life if these are the things that we got our kids listening to mm -hmm. on the radio where you driving anywhere you going all you hear on the radio or, or you playing music from your phone you 
you playing drill music. I ain't gonna name no artists to. Yeah, you know I don't want to put out any artists, yeah, but at the but same time, y'all y'all know, y'all know, because yeah. it, it goes. It's the same thing as like as far as female rap too. Like, I feel like female nah, rap is real. very repetitive at this point. Um, nobody's original. Yeah. I miss. I miss. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, we need more artists like Dave Lo. Yeah, yeah. We need more Dave artists, called, bro. I, I, like, bro. I don't understand how she didn't get her shot in the way she should have, because she was so different than the rest. In my opinion, she you, was so different. The entertainment industry, like you gotta remember, the devil was a musician. Like mm -hmm. the and the music, the music industry, the entertainment industry, like. It's not that everybody that makes it sell their soul, but it's like certain things that where you're exploiting yourself in a way, if you, to like, just to make it to a certain point. Like, it's only select artists that I feel like have made it without exploiting themselves or exploiting their culture in a way. Mm -hmm. And even with those artists, it's, it's hard to say that they haven't done it at all. It's just they're not really known for it as much yeah. as other artists are. You know there are saying? artists out there, but they're like, uh, I guess you would call them underground artists. Yeah, Indian they're artists known, but that. not known. Like, exactly. If, unless you're looking for that type of feel and that energy in that town, you're not going to find it. We, That's what I'm saying, yeah. Like, like, I barely even listen to rap. My M.O. is like R&B. Mm -hmm. My M.O. is, you know, uh early 2000s pop yeah, yeah I don't really listen to rap but it's pushed to me like mm -hmm. basically from where I'm from when you go out to the clubs yeah um like a lot of people know I worked in the entertainment industry as mm -hmm. a dancer and that's all you hear like yeah. is all that mm -hmm. you know all that pooty yeah, pop music exactly literally. so it's just at, 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 like when I got home from work like to get get away from all that negative energy and that sexualization I would turn on some old school R&B yeah. or some like you know some Lauryn Hill something I listen Anita to Baker. a lot something I listen to a lot that helps me out is worship music like mm -hmm. I guess you can call it I gospel just, music I cannot get into gospel I just it's can't a, I, at first I, tried, I couldn't either like, like the worship music I listen to it's like so don't don't give me wrong I love the Lord I, love nah, love. Like, yeah, I just yeah, can't get into gospel yeah. I know what you mean because it's just like I don't know why exactly I can't. It's certain gospel songs that I do like, but for the most part, it's it's, certain, it's a lot of gospel songs that I can't really get into. Mm -hmm. Mainly because those because I don't worship, uh, I don't praise the name Jesus. Mm -hmm. I praise the name Yahushua Hamashiach, mm -hmm. his Hebrew name. And the majority of the gospel songs they praise Jesus. They say Lord God, which is you know I believe what you believe in your heart, like your true feelings and love for the, the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's what's defined, not. The language that you're using or the names that you're using because it's a lot of confusion but if you have the knowledge where you know this is what's correct or this is what's closer to the truth mm -hmm. i feel like it's your responsibility to take lead and be an example for others you know what right. i'm saying so, i need to go find the truth because I, I just had this conversation with my parents last night i was like because my parents they grew they they raised me in a christian household mm -hmm. and i had this uh conversation with them last night because i go against a lot of the things that are acceptable by Christians. Yeah. I was an exotic dancer. I'm bisexual. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things I've done in my life that are that go way against that religion. And uh, I feel like growing up, I was blessed, and I was uh, I I could have been down bad so many times. Mm -hmm. But I know there's a higher power because all those times I got out of those situations. But I told my parents yesterday. I said I don't think I believe in the traditional Bible. It's yeah. like the it's basically a common sense Bible, but at the same like it's common sense right from wrong. Yeah, but at yeah. the same time, what happens when you play the ga game telephone? Yeah. Something is bound to get exactly. misconstrued exactly. if people are redoing the Bible exactly. so many times. New Testament, Old Testament, New New Testament, mm -hmm. they are bound to write their own agendas in there. So who's yeah. to say that is really what the Lord is putting in there? And I don't want to get That's, too much into religion. Yeah, for sure. But for sure. that's just but how that's I, believe in a, I believe in a higher power, though. For sure. That's, and that's what's important, you know what I'm saying? As long as you believe that this didn't just happen by a miraculous. Yeah. yeah, by circumstance. Like, it's actually a divine being that is responsible for our creation. Like, I don't necessarily down people that believe in multiple divine beings that may be responsible. Me, personally, I believe in one that is responsible. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a process to it that's beyond our understanding that's hard to explain in the words that we are con not condemned but that we that we use you know what i'm saying but i feel like it may be multiple huh? <laughs> <laughs> the lights went off it's getting it's getting yeah, deep for real. Let's get crazy. deep, bro. <laughs> 
But I was gonna tell you like what you were saying about the Bible getting misconstrued. Like that's an event that actually happened by this group called the Hellenistic Jews. They well, um one of the main things research. they did. Yeah, Hellenistic Jews. Look that up. They um they they translated the Bible from Hebrew Aramaic from the the original text it was in to I think if I'm not mistaken it was Greek. Mm -hmm. And then um that's how like the name Jesus came about Eosis. But it, it's a lot to it. I don't wanna get too deep in that yeah because you know because you know once i probably post this on youtube they're yeah, gonna be like this exactly <laughs> <literally>. <laughs> flat yeah but okay yeah. let's move on to um other things and um how is your um relationship with your family how did that affect your journey in music my family is like my everything, honestly. I was Aww. just with them last night. My mom's birthday was yesterday, January 23rd. God bless. That yeah. is great. My parents' birthday is this weekend. Really? My mom's birthday is Friday. My dad's birthday is Saturday. That's crazy. So you know Sag. how you know how to deal with an Aquarius. Well, I mean, Aquarius, yeah. yeah. My son's a Sag Aquarius. Yeah, yeah I'm a Sagittarius well. too. My, my uh, birthday, November 30th. Yeah, Sagittarius is supposed to be my perfect match, like as far as like best friends yeah. and shit. So I'm excited. Yeah, we smooth. We ain't, we ain't too Yeah, y'all chill, y'all. But y'all, I bet you, you real close to your mom, huh? Super close. But yeah, I knew it, cause that's how my son is. He he cries like literally when I'm with him at night. He cries if I t let his hand go. Yeah. He wants to hold my hand while he's sleeping. I so I'm already my mom seeing how this is going. For real. Yeah, I, think I already see like how this is going. Six or seven. Damn, see, for no, real. no. I had my own bed, had my own room, but no. I was sleeping with my mom and dad no. for a while. <laughs> no, that's so cute, though. That's yeah. great that you had that relationship with them. I grew up in a two parent household, too, myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is something that's lacking, like, in 100%. this generation. When you experience it, you see how important yeah, it like, is. Yeah, like, you be looking at people, then you look at other people, and you be like, because see, I'm not saying I'm, the, yeah, because I'm not saying I'm better difference. than nobody. I, I made my share though. of mistakes, but mm -hmm. when I'm in those type of scenarios and people are in the same scenario as me, they 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 react way differently than I do. Mm -hmm. Like so, I yeah. do see the difference between being raised by two parents and being raised like mm -hmm. one parent or my being raised by grandparents. They was my parents been together since they was sixteen. And so, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I got two little sisters. They twins. Um. My but, mom's a twin. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's crazy. My mom's an identical twin, and my mom and dad have been together since I was five months old, so right. going on 25 years. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Was your parents young when they had you? My mom had me at 26. My dad was like 34. My parents was 19. Yo, okay, yeah, they were young, young. High school yeah. sweethearts and shit. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> that's good. So do they encourage you to, like, Push your music and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they support me 100. Like we was just driving home from um, the restaurant we went to, and they was playing music, jamming out. And my dad turned my song on. They all turned up. Ah, that's what's you know what I'm saying? But they support my music a lot, and that's another reason why I'm taking the route that I'm taking, where I'm trying to rap about things I'm more proud of, cause they mm -hmm. listening, and they, like I said, they mean everything to me. So if I'm, they know me more than anybody. So it was a point in time when I was making songs that wasn't really me you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying i was like my dad listened to it my mom my sisters and they're like nah this ain't it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying they was the ones really and i had friends to tell me that too might be you yeah i ain't gonna lie though coming from chicago i'm from the burbs of chicago but coming from chicago area at all it's like it's hard to really just be okay with not being one of those like street niggas or mm -hmm. going down that path you know what i'm saying it's easy to be yourself for sure but like like a lot of a lot of dudes that that walked out that, that that's from Chicago, they look at a nigga that's not street or that's not from that cloth as a goofy mm -hmm. or a lame. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of us be so so convicted to trying to prove we're not goofy or lame. Sometimes mm -hmm. we forget just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? And it show yeah. naturally. You don't gotta really try hard to prove that you're not a goofy or lame or prove that you're tough or that you're not no soft ass nigga. But you know what I'm saying? There's two people that are really respect from Chicago that I really like. I well, I don't listen to a lot of rap, but I love mm -hmm. all their songs. Juice World and Kanye West. You know, I went to the same high school as Juice World. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. That's the stuff. He's his self. Yeah, he okay? is. Okay. He's yeah, he's talking about sad stuff, but it's very relatable. Yeah, he's talking about drugs, but he was really doing them. Like, he was talking exactly. about things that he was really going through. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people wasn't really listening. They was listening, but they weren't listening. It was like surface value. Mm -hmm. They thought like, oh, he just, you know, talk about sad shit. Yeah, you, you know? said Juice World and Kanye? Yeah. yeah. Those are That's my favorite people from yeah. Chicago right now. Yeah, I love Kanye. 
Yeah, I love Kanye too. I listened to his uh, I listened to his whole college dropout album mm -hmm. the other day cleaning. I was like, this <laughs> shit was a, was yeah. was before its time, For real. right? For real. So, what do you see yourself like going forward with the music stuff? And have you been able to connect and network and actually make moves out here since you know you started back doing music um, more <coughs> seriously? Yeah, I, I see myself performing more, performing, having more shows, um, put more music out. I have an album that I want to put out this year. I'm actually going to try to utilize the the little phrase I said back in the day. I'm going to eat her ass like a cheesecake. Mm. Yo, bitch, I'm from grass like a sweepstake, and I eat her ass like a cheesecake. Mm. I named the album. Oh, my gosh, because <laughs> why would you talk about eating ass before people was really eating ass? No, for real. You was talking about eating ass before Janae Aiko was yeah, like, yeah. I eat that booty like groceries. No, they talk real. about, Janae put it on the map. He, this man put it on the map. Like, we gonna no, take a shot real. to that. Cause you put, I'm not, I, I had to think about it the other day. I was like, this man was talking about eating ass in high school before men was really eating ass. Like now everybody want to eat ass and be like, yeah, I eat your ass and stuff like that. Nobody was talking about eating ass back then. No, for real, you ain't lying. Shit. Like, well, boy, and you in high school? That's a grown man sport. <laughs> Where is it? I'm coming. I'm for real. Don't be pouring me no big boy shot. Okay, I got. Alright, but. Yeah, for real. At the time, I wasn't eating ass when I said that shit. So, I was, so how did that come to mind? Like, I was just being goofy. Like, I wasn't trying to say a bunch of serious <laughs> ass lines. I'm like, we not no rappers. We got to say something funny. So. I'm just, I'm going to eat ass like Jesus. You feel me? I'm like, this shit ended up going, so kept it. Bro, you need to put that shit on shirts. You need to make a cheesecake called Ash Cheesecake. Our first manager <laughs> tried to, that was the main thing he was telling me. Like, you need to make some shirts with some with yes, cheesecake. Yes, with, with some of those lines on it, because um, they are very, like, quotable lines. Mm -hmm. Very quotable lines. But that's yeah. crazy. Cheers to eating ass like a cheesecake. <laughs> So have you ever ate ass? Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least you honest. <laughs> At least you honest. People would sit here and be like, I never ate ass. Only one girl though. She was your woman. She was my lady. Okay. For sure. We ain't really fucking with each other right now, but we cool. Would you take that thing back? Take uh, it back. Don't you better hope yeah, she never see this. I always got love for her. She gonna get in your DMs real quick. So you <laughs> Probably. Really see Probably, probably not. <laughs> she one of them. She, she got her own for sure. She don't need me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's, that's she live what out here? Yeah, she live out here. Okay. Y'all heard it first. He ain't checking for none of you hoes. He want his old flame back. Nah, I, I'm not. <laughs> saying, I'm not saying I want him back. Nah, I like. I like us. Like we good. Me and cool. As long as we cool, that's what I care about. How long you been single? I've been single since I was 18. Like really? me, me and Shorty, we was just talking. Like we was, mm, just we ain't never tied a knot. Exactly. Heavy, heavy. You know so, how I go. What is it about like dating nowadays that you like? Eh. Me personally is like, like I'm not about to commit unless I really know I want to be with you. Cause I'm mm -hmm. at the age where if I commit to you, where we boyfriend girlfriend we exclusive. We preparing for marriage. Right. I'm 27. So you know you what I'm saying? So you want to get married? Yeah, for sure. Because you've seen your parents, and I want to get married mm -hmm. too. I've seen my parents, and like they accomplish I've way more together. People, I've met a lot of people that don't want to want to get married. Yeah, it's this generation. Yeah. It really is because everybody feels like they got so many options. Everybody feels like you the next don't. person has more to offer than who mm -hmm. they with. They don't want to take a chance with nobody. I no blame more. that on social media. I do too. They don't want to take a chance on nobody, and they don't want to build with somebody they want somebody mm -hmm. who's already built yeah they want to ride they coattail 100 percent. yeah so i've been with my significant other my my baby father for six years on and off mm -hmm. it is definitely trials and tribulations mostly because we are, we have a big ass age gap he's mm -hmm. 15 years older than me okay. so like it kind of gets it kind of gets um tricky mm -hmm. because we be in two different stages mm -hmm. i met him when i was 19 he was 35 
Mm -hmm. Now I'm 25, he's 40. Right. So I want to do certain stuff that he's already done and like yeah. I'm over it, I'm past it. So that's where things can be a little tricky. But like like I said before, it's all about who you want to take a chance on, no, who you really real. love. Mm -hmm. But sometimes love ain't enough. It's going to be a challenge all the time with anybody because mm -hmm. y'all are two different people, y'all are two different individuals. So y'all going to have y'all differences it's about how y'all deal with them differences. Mm -hmm. you know. And then when y'all actually have a disagreement, like that don't mean that y'all got to stop being how y'all are. And I'm talking about not just for you and your 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 man. I'm talking about like for anybody. I'm just saying those mm -hmm. pronouns. But like y'all don't. We that's that's what I feel like the main problem with relationships is communication. It's a lot of things that get misinterpreted, or especially with social media, like something as simple as liking another girl picture. Some people don't even want to communicate though anymore. Yeah. They be like, I don't even want to talk. Black. I'm done. Cutting you off. I don't even want to have this argument. I want to have this talk. I, they don't want to have uncomfortable conversations anymore. And that's, and that's what has to happen for you mm -hmm. to move past and really love somebody even more. Mm -hmm. Is to feel like you could really talk and confine in that person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's still a lot of good women out there. I think it's still a lot of good men out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like they get lost in the sauce, though. They get overshadowed by the bullshit. It's, about, it's just hard to find. It's hard to, like find a nice place that's a nice dating pool like you don't want to find your significant other in the club you never you can you, I, I never think know. you can i don't you think can you find, can he feels like you can find love in the club i think you can find love in the club so. for sure you i don't know what think I'm so. i don't it's really just, i really don't think so people are there for a good time not a long time <laughs> But you know when you see somebody you super attracted to and then they feeling you two y'all both got the got an eye for each other and then just go from there i think it's possible i know a couple motherfuckers no a couple couples that's well, no, I just had a girl on here. She married. She just married her wife. They met on the cl in the club on her That's birthday. That's what I'm saying. So I'm not going to say you can't. You can find but love But it can seem very unrealistic to me. It's hard. In my world. Yeah. It feels like I can. I would never find love in the club. Like, my first my first. You got to think, though. If a man see you in the club, you, you choose to go out for your friend's birthday. Y'all go to whatever club, man. It's a dude that's, well, for you, it's going to probably be hard because you got a situation. Yeah. But just say if y'all, it's, it's an off time, you know what I'm saying? And then it's a guy that's coming on to you, and he got your eye. He a good-looking guy. He coming correct, you know what I'm saying? It's just about, at that point, where y'all take it at. And if you actually giving him a chance or if you're not trying to find love in the club, like, you, you're not one of them. Like, even if it's possible, I don't want to find out it's possible. <laughs> so you ever found love in the club? Uh, have a. No, I don't think I have a. Mm -mm. Me personally, no. Okay. No, I ain't yeah, never. No. I mean, I found flings. I found like, oh, girl, you look good. All right. Every woman, every woman number that I got from the club, like, it ain't going nowhere. They just, they like I said, it was good for there for a yeah. good time, not a long time. Yeah. So let's step away from the relationship stuff <laughs> for a minute let's talk about value, family values so do you see yourself having children or do you even have children right now yeah I don't have any children right now but I want children for sure how many children you want at least three three at least two probably I have one and I don't want no one yeah no, no, no. You don't want a daughter to make a little mini me? Hell no. <laughs> you must have been. Bro, I seen something today that made me sick to my stomach. Okay, so there's a viral TikTok going viral of a lady that owns a pole dancing studio mm -hmm. that is offering mommy and me pole dancing classes. Right. And there's little girls in there literally pole dancing. I think I actually seen a video of that. I am a retired stripper, and I can tell you firsthand that shit is wrong. Mm -hmm. Stripper poles are as, are are associated with sexuality and adult mm -hmm. sex work. Right. It doesn't matter how you flip it, spin it, or twist it. Mm -hmm. The shit is going to be sexualized. The pole is going to be linked to the strip club. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if you say it's pole fitness. It don't matter if you say they got all their clothes on. It's going to be sexualized. Right. So you're putting these videos up of little girls on poles for petties to see. Yeah. It's too much that comes along with having a girl. Too yeah. fucking much. And I know how much I put my dad through hell mm -hmm. that I don't want no girl. 
I'm, I'm happy. I manifested my little boy. I mm -hmm. really did. When I got pregnant, I was like, I'm having a boy. My whole, <laughs> until I found out, I kept saying, I'm, I'm having a boy. I'm having a boy. Yeah. And they was like, what if you have a girl? And I said, I'm not. I'm having a boy. <laughs> I wore all blue to my ultrasound side appointment to find out that I was having a boy. Because yeah. I knew it. I knew God would not give me a damn girl because I would not know what to do with her. <laughs> and this year, it's, did you see that fucking TikTok? Of, the, the sexy oh, yeah. red, the, babies, the little baby. Yeah, I saw that. Bro, I cannot have a girl. That was crazy. Point blank, period. And especially having a girl and doing what I did back in the day. You think my little my little girl can go to school and they be like, oh, your mom used to be a stripper. If my dad, if my if my baby goes to school and they talk about, oh, your mom used to be a stripper. My son could say, yeah, and she was a fine ass one. Mm -hmm. My little girl can't do that. They don't right. say her mom was a hoe. I feel you. So, I'd rather have a boy. And that's all I'm going to have. No, all strippers are not hoes. They I'm, not. Let's clear that up. It's very misconstrued. That's what you're a stripper don't mean you're a hoe. I had, like, my, like I said, my, my friend called me. Mm -hmm. I had her on my first show or whatever. She, um, we were friends in high school, and me and her, we bonded off the fact that we both became exotic dancers mm -hmm. after high school. So um, she came up with the first stripper protest. Actually, when COVID nineteen happened and all, the, and all the clubs got shut down, she came up with the first stripper protest that went viral. So she she's a very what big. What was she ad. protesting? She was protesting. Um, City Hall and the mayor in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, because they opened up everything at, when COVID nineteen COVID nineteen happened. But not the strip club. But not the strip club. So she picket fenced did everything outside of City Hall to get the strip clubs open because those are people's livelihoods. That's tough. Yeah. Not only is there people who like I met all type of people in the strip club. There mm -hmm. is dental assistants that are in school, mm -hmm. teachers, people that are in the police academy, no, all types of and they just do this for extra money because mm -hmm. the economy is so fucked, fucked up. up. You need like if y'all understand how good the money was, y'all wouldn't be criticizing so much. We get such a uh, bad rep because of what twenty five of twenty five percent of the dancers do. Mm -hmm. So that get overshadowed by you know, the other seventy five percent that actually there to make money and and actually have have motives yeah. to elevate and stuff. So yeah. you know, it's just you know, not all strippers are hoes, but yeah. you know, we you know, there's propaganda and mm -hmm. media and Do you the think way things a, people tr twist it. Do you think it's a profession that's similar to stripping that's for males, where males have that same problem or not? I don't think males have that. I, I've never really been to a male strip club. I, not me. I want to. I know there's a lot in L.A. I might go. But, um, yeah, I don't think they face the same problem. I just think they got the only thing they probably get put on them is that they fuck their clients. That's probably the only stigma that's on them. Is mm. they probably fuck their clients. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't one shot get me drunk? Because uh, <laughs> I didn't eat, man. Yeah, you, like, you I didn't eat. Drunk I was thirsty. I was thirsty. I was thinking about pouring another one. Like, Pour what? I'll take a sip, but I ain't pouring another one with you. Hell no, I gotta make it home, like you said. <laughs> but, you know, if I ate, I would have been taking three, four, five shots. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a little, I might take a little, I don't know, I'll take a little, little one, a little, little one. You pour a big boy shot, I'm going to take a little, little one. Alright, I got you. You probably don't even know what little mean. Watch this. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a little, little one. Ah, what are you cheers to this time? Uh... Cheers to, cheers to your first and not last appearance on the show. For sure. I'm with that. Because you are the most, you one of the I most refreshing the, um, conversations I've had so far. I'm glad, I'm glad that's the case, for real. I saw, uh, I watched the one with the masseuse <laughs> for a little bit, just, just to get a sense of how you be. Bro, they flagged that shit at 15K. But I'll fuck with you, though. You be asking the right questions. You really, like, you get, you dive into it. I feel like... You gonna take off like it's gonna Aww, be. A, it's gonna thank really, you. It's gonna my, really blow up. My dream is to like host red carpets 
and to have my own talk show. I have some things in the works, like, but I'm not going to mm. talk too much on it. But You know what the main formula is? Consistency. Yeah, consistency. I'm really bad at that, but yeah, I'm trying. I I'm really trying. Cheers to consistency. Consistency. No, but yeah, he, I'm not 15K. I got 1.5K in a week on that episode, and somebody flagged it, and I had to repost it. I had to go back and f figure Man, out don't what. Don't like haters. Yeah, I always had to go back and figure out what was wrong with it, and I just took out a lot of the cussing, and then I reposted it, and then I was at 500 views, but. That's tough. Part of the game. That's that's, that's one of those like, last where you see like like obviously people watching it because you mm -hmm. found me. I was like, how did he find me? You know my boy um Jonah Tree. Yeah. He was the one who had told me about you. He was like uh you know you should you should link up with with T Nasty. She he t she showed me a video with him on there. Oh yeah. I'm like. I'm I feel like I need to link back up with him again because mm -hmm. I feel like I didn't ask the questions that I really wanted to ask. I like. I don't really write down, I don't prepare for mm. podcasts. I just come in here and say what comes to mind. Right. But I I left having more questions than when I came in. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I need to have him back on the show. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. But, it could be a thing or you can learn from it and then just like mm -hmm. as you move on with I each guest. I learned because I used to have um, a co-host. Like I used to have a whole different studio mm -hmm. and a co-host and everything. And I used to write down everything, and I used to stumble over my words and everything when mm -hmm. I write down and plan stuff. So I, know I was what you like, mean. "Yeah, writing yeah. is hard because you got a script in your head that you're trying to stick to, yeah. as opposed to just filling mm -hmm. out the vibe and what's going, what, what fits the moment." Yeah, so I started yeah. freestyling, and it worked better for me. But then yeah. sometimes I'll be like, "Damn, I should have asked this." That, that's hard Damn, to I do. Asked that. That's hard to do when you got shit going on in real life, because like you catch yourself getting stumped. Think like, damn, what's going on with it? And then you, oh yeah, I'm on the whole podcast mm -hmm. right now. You gotta fumble up some shit. No, before I came though, before I came though, I kept telling myself what I wanted to ask in my head right. for you. Yeah. Because I had a lot of cut. Like basically, you're my where are they now episode. Yeah, I feel that. Because I remember you <laughs> from high school, man. Yeah. Like you. Yeah. Okay, so do you remember the sausage era too? Mm -hmm. Bacon. Sausage, that, yeah. you remind me of the sausage era. Yeah, yeah. But you were like way before the sausage. Era. Yeah, I know what you're talking so about. So you yeah. paved the way for the sausage era. Yep. I'm gonna yeah. let y'all know what the sausage era. I'm gonna put a little it clip in here because they probably don't even know what the sausage. Yeah. Everybody say sausage, keep it going. Egg, bacon, grits, sausage. sausage. Gotta be coffee, lick my sausage. sausage. What I did, I hop on the ring. Sausage. Get a pancakes with the mud. Man, 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 sausage. sausage. <laughs> You paved the way for sausage. Like yeah. you don't understand how impactful you were. I feel like you probably don't even give yourself credit. I mean, I do. I ain't gonna lie. I pray about it. But I think I think y'all yeah, that he blessed me with the the credentials and the assets and everything that I have. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm -hmm. But I ain't gonna lie though, it's it's a lot of things that I still want to do in this life. Like, I feel like I haven't hit my prime years yet. For you're sure. not. You're not even in your mm -hmm. 30s yet. Men's yeah. prime is 30s. Not for real. So. That's when they're more secure about their self. That's when, when where they're more like knowledge, frontal lobe, developed, everything. Mm -hmm. Like that's when they're more sure about their self and stuff. Like yeah. women mature way more faster than men. Like we. We by the time we're twenty five, we good. Like mm -hmm. we know what we want, we know where we're going. Y'all take a little longer. Mm -hmm, that's true. Yeah, take a little, little longer. That's why a lot of older men end up being with younger women. Yeah. Because they love each other out at right. a certain age. Like. Right. But yeah, you still a young boy. Twenty seven, and girl years, is like <laughs> Talking about girl twenty two. <laughs> yes, twenty seven and girl years. So I should be looking for a twenty two year old. Yeah. You gonna have a lot of fun. You gonna turn your ass out. You gonna oh. eat ass like a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, for real, like for real, y'all like y'all at least five, five years behind women, mm -hmm. like for real. No, I see the logic. My um, my little sisters, they watching them grow up. They mature way faster than me. Mm -hmm. like, 
I'm mature, don't get me wrong, but... You are mature. Mm -hmm. Like, you, but you still give me young. Like, yeah. I'm thinking you my age. Yeah. I'm thinking you 25. You're only two years older than me, though, but... Yeah, 27. I turned 28 this year. How old? You turned 26 this year? Mm-hmm. Okay. June. So, you a Gemini? Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Who you know a Gemini? My best friend. Oh. Like, hey, go best friend. That's my best friend. That's my, my, no, we the shit. My friends, yeah. We the shit, but we, we a little indecisive. We a little bipolar. We a little wishy-washy. It's easier to know who your friend, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like when you not being the same person you usually are and somebody know how to deal with it, you know what I'm saying? You see, all right, cool. You can actually deal with me when mm -hmm. I'm having these mood swings or yeah. when I'm not in the same. Because I'm crazy as fuck. And all, you know, it takes a certain that. type of person to understand a Gemini. I understand that, yeah. And that brings me to my next question. Like, ever since that, I know people treat you different ever since mm -hmm. you went viral. How has your friendships changed since then? A lot. whole lot. Mm -hmm. whole lot. Like, I Makes fell off. Like yeah, yeah. But a whole lot, like. I'm still locked in. Well, the the, the people I'm locked in right now in life, like my main circle, they you like people, your set group. Yeah, my set group. I met them all after those videos. Mm -hmm. Like the people that I knew before those videos, like we still cool and shit. But it's a it's a space because it's like when I was going through that phase, I was also I'm part to blame because when it, when that shit was going on, I wasn't really. I was living in a moment, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I was really you was in my head. like a little, you know, you was a, a, a little a fake celebrity. celebrity, you know what I'm no, saying? No, like, not even a fake celebrity. You have, in your city, you was a little celebrity. Nah, for real. Like, I couldn't even go to the grocery store without motherfuckers like, you, uh... Yeah. And I came to 80 Arizona. million views? Are you serious? Nah, there's not for even, real. there's not even, there's not even people, 80 million people in motherfucking United States on YouTube. Nah, for real. Like, come on now. And I'll be even thinking like how like how the videos begin posted on Twitter and Instagram now. That one video probably got more it's probably than, touching a billion. Yeah, like more than what it was. For like, sure, because that yeah. shit get reposted. Because like, Twitter once a month. was like back in the day, Twitter was the like hot shit. Mm -hmm. Like Instagram was hot, but it didn't reach its peak yeah. like Twitter did. Twitter yeah. was like fire at a point. Yeah. And then after Twitter died down, that's when Instagram started building up. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. What's your, what social media you fuck with the most? Right now, Instagram, because I get yeah. paid. <laughs> uh, yeah. I got the only social media. I tap in with you, find out about <laughs> that, because, like, I got 40, over 40,000, but, like, my page ain't really doing what it's supposed to. I don't yeah. get paid directly from Instagram. I get paid from people reaching out to me for, uh, to do collaborations. They right. be like, can you promote this wig? Can you promote this body wash? Can you promote this supplement? Yeah. And I'll... And I'll give it to you for free, and I'll pay you a, you know, yeah. little set salary. I don't get paid from Instagram. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Instagram, they be on bullshit. They don't want to pay you. It's just the connections. Yeah, it's just the Instagram. people, like, you get in this type of engagement, so can you show my product to your people, and I'll mm -hmm. pay you for it. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I don't, and, like, just like YouTube, I don't get paid from YouTube either. But mm -hmm. I get paid from people, like, one of my hair reviews got, like, 14K. So people seen like hair people seen that mm -hmm. and be like oh I'll send you free wigs yeah and I'll pay you to post the hair review like you I don't gonna, get paid from you gonna manifest that you gonna get paid from YouTube because Instagram Instagram IRS I'm just kidding. <laughs> for real for real you gonna manifest that this year gonna be the year you get paid from YouTube Instagram do you like, want to keep going that. or because yeah. we coming up on our two yeah. minutes. Let me see. We coming up on two minutes. Four thirty to five thirty here. Yeah. We coming up on two minutes. I mean, we can it's keep going. We can. I'm on. Uh, I'm down. I'm down to keep going. Shit went fast as hell. I ain't uh, gonna when you having fun. When you having fun. Time when you having fun. For real. Um, I I got honestly, I want to share this with my viewers, but I do plan on like I'm coming up on my tenth episode, mm -hmm. my solo podcast. So okay, okay. I'm kind of a little excited. I kind of want to do a live audience yeah. and like to a stage type for my 10th episode but instead of just being me and one other person i want to do a whole panel mm -hmm. so you gave me good energy and mm -hmm. good conversation so you probably be good for the panel because sure, i want to yeah. kind of do like three women three men yeah. and talk about like real topics, real topics. Mm -hmm. yeah so that's something i want to get into um i talked about the, the 
there's another guy that's in the Phoenix area that has mm -hmm. a podcast, so he's going to be my co-host for mm -hmm. the panel. But for my 10th episode, that's something I plan on doing. So y'all yeah. heard that, heard it here first. Yeah. So when y'all see my live audience, mm -hmm. <laughs> don't be that's surprised. And y'all gonna see him on the panel too, because I have a select few I really do want on the panel. So it's gonna be dope. Mm, yeah, I'm fucking with that. That's gonna be cool for sure. Do you have anything coming up that you want to let the people know? Like anything? Uh, this is album. Um, that's the name of it. Gonna be Cheesecake. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> taking advantage of that, and the whole album is a love album. Oh that song god. that I just dropped. I love it. It's a song that's off that album. It's um. It's like a love story from front to end. The seven so songs. It's, it's like a story. Mm -hmm. oh, I love yeah, albums like, like that. That from song to song they tell a story. I love albums Literally, like that. Literally, like I'm falling for a shorty, and then like we'll see where it goes yeah, from there. Yeah, because so it could go tough. good, but it could go bad. It's not based off. It's not about a specific. It's a couple songs that's about specific people. You like, know who? Um, Okay, finish what you said. It was like that one song that I just dropped. That's about somebody specifically. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, who is it about? Uh, the shorty who asked. Like, <laughs> I knew it was. <laughs> Y'all, you need to slide back into DMs, boo. Hey, we he got it bad man, for you. I ain't tripping though. Ah, I know he ain't tripping. Yeah. I'm saying he got it bad for you. You left the imprint. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, somebody that I really do want to mention too that I like that did. Oh my god! If you like. I love meaningful, meaningful music. Like you mm -hmm. dropped the EP. I forgot what it's called, but it's a phone number, mm -hmm. and it's story from story to story to story about yeah. his whole life. Jordan Lucas. I'm gonna check it when out. When he first got moving, yeah. I don't know about his new music because he became a little mainstream. He's trying yeah. to fit into the status quo. But when the first his first little EP that got mm -hmm. him noticed, I'm gonna have to check it out. Love you know the name of it? It's a phone number. It's literally a phone number. Yes. But yeah, Jordan Lucas. I love. I loved his EP. But after that first EP, I haven't listened to him since. Mhm. Mm yeah, but I like him. Like I said, it got to for me. Rap has to tell a story for me to really check it out. Mhm. Mm I can't just listen to it like, like I like Dirk for the hype shit, but I yeah. can't listen to his album song for song to yeah. song. Song, cause it's just very repetitive. Yeah. To me, I like I like look I like dirt, but. So who the who the main artist that's getting plays when you listen to music? What's your what's your top five artists that you listen to? Top five. Mm -hmm. You gonna be like who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is gonna be hard, cause I love a lot of people, but um, the people that I play on the daily. I would say, okay, Mariah the Scientist. Yeah. I love her. I love Mariah. Um, Young Thug, because not, he doesn't have, people don't notice, but he just doesn't have gangster music. He has country music. He has pop yeah. music. Like, yeah. this nigga, he's very versatile. Very versatile. So, okay, so um, I said Mariah the Scientist, Young Thug. Um, I love, 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 love Juice World. I yeah. fell in love with him more after he passed, though. Yeah, yeah, I know what you um, mean. Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, I'm trying to think, think. I'm not even gonna lie. I love me some Pink. Pink? I love Pink. She's like Pink. Pop, pink. She pop star royalty to me. Uh. She a little, she's a white girl. Pink, pop star. Mm. So what? I am a rock star. Right, I got cool. my rock moves. Yeah. Okay, but okay. if you leave, if you listen to her other music, I she got some, it. Yeah, she got some fire shit. Um, but I think she she hasn't made anything really new in mm -hmm. a long time. And then I love who else? I love Bruno Mars. Okay. Those are that's my, four. That's five. That's five. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So you say my right side is young, young thug, thug, pink, pink. Um, Juice World Juice, oh yeah. and Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars, okay. How okay. about you? Me, um, G Herbo. I listen to a lot of G Herbo. I stopped listening to him. Because <laughs> it's just, to me, like, I'm like, I can't, boy, you rob it off beat, it's stuck in he, my head up. He don't be all beat to me. Really? Like, it don't never sound all beat to me. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Oh wow! Like I ain't never heard a song that was like, "Hey, you kind of off beat." Bro, he always off beat. 
That's crazy. You just like he, got him. A, he got a different cadence. Like he okay. just be. I mean, shit. Okay. G Herbo. G Herbo. So, uh, me. I forgot. I should have said me first. I listen to my music over and over. I listen to my music all Reminds the time. You love what you produce, and that's all that matters. I, I listen to my songs all the time. Um, so me, G Herbo. Uh, it's his artist named Hadara Baya. She mm -hmm. make worship music. Um, Never praising Yah. Uh, she called. I'll yeah, send you some of her music. Mm -hmm. Like she got some real peaceful music. That's yeah, soothing. I need some, especially when I'm like in the bathtub or when I'm cleaning, washing dishes, yeah. or when I'm trying to unwind after being with them damn kids all day. <laughs> you gonna love. You gonna love her music. Like you ever. You you do you say the phrase hallelujah? Yes. Yeah. So hallelujah just means praise. Yeah. So it's just a lot of music where she praising Yah and she just you know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna send that to you so you can check it out because it's real peaceful. So me G Herbo Hadara by Yah. Uh, yeah, it's hard. J Cole. I love J Cole. Yeah, I but to I J. haven't Cole. listened to J Cole since that one album that he made his album. With like the, with the children on it or the one when before that. When he made or after that, it's one album I listened from front to back. I forgot the album, but he had visuals where he was a slave and. What you talking about? Then he made that song with about when he said, "I want that love, Jada Will love." Mm -hmm. That's the last album, album I listened yeah. to. I, 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 after that, I don't know. He's just been doing a lot of collaborations, and yeah. I, I want him to do solo shit. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I feel like he better alone. In my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. He he started out doing a bunch of tapes with like, no features. I feel like I feel like yeah. I feel like he's just doing collaborations just to show love to people. Mm -hmm. But it just don't fit him to me. Yeah. I feel like he better he yeah. do more volumes alone. That's true. Yeah, I like J Cole more when he do his own shit. Mm -hmm. That's how he usually do it, but sometimes he collab, you know. He's collabing more because he just wanted to show love to people. I got a question that we was talking about last night and we was having a hard time talking about it. So who you think who you taking I don't know how to phrase the question but Rihanna or Beyonce? I'm sorry. I'd really love Rihanna. You taking Rihanna over Beyonce? I'm gay, so not only for her yes. looks, but just for her overall personality and yeah. sex appeal. Yeah. Like, her as a person to me is so much edgier. Yeah. So, I feel like Beyonce is so much polished. She's so much, I gotta do things in a certain way. So much conditioned mm -hmm. to, like, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. She put on a certain image. That's Rihanna don't give it two fucks. That's interesting. Not one, two, three. Rihanna don't care. Rihanna gonna be her unapologetically. Beyonce, she always takes precaution. <laughs> takes precaution. Yes, that's how I feel. I love Rihanna. I'm not saying she's better vocalist than Beyonce. Right. I'm not saying she's a better dancer than Beyonce. Who make, who make better music? Damn, that's hard. <laughs> Beyonce, she a legend now. Yeah. I feel like she makes better music, but okay, Rihanna okay, okay. all around for me, I would pick Rihanna I, I any see day. What you're saying, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got, uh, we got, it's 38, 45, 45 so, so, yeah, we got minutes. seven minutes, For yeah. Sure. For sure. <sighs> what you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you want to take another shot? For sure. <laughs> Do you want to play a game where we take shots for the game? Where okay, okay. Eggs, bacon, and sausage. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a game where basically I Take say a shot if <laughs> that's it. I say something, you say something. If you stumble, answer the question, or take too long, you gotta take a shot. So basically, if I be like nuts, you gotta be like squirrel. And then we gotta go back and forth. I gotta say something that's real. So it don't gotta be associated to what I say. You just gotta say something. Okay. You can say the most answer. off the wall shit to throw me off. Okay. But you gotta say something. So I'm gonna let you decide. We can play that. Okay. Or it's this game that I grew up playing where 
you decide a topic mm -hmm. by just say fruits mm -hmm. and you gotta name fruits okay. and you only got three seconds to respond and you can't say something that's already been said oh let's do that because i haven't that? played that game on, on the show before yeah let's go all right what's the first topic you want to do you get to pick um kids tv shows kids tv shows that's tough i never did that before you don't do it all right let's do it um uh, you want me to go first or you yeah. go first go uh, Fairly Odd Parents. Blues Clues. SpongeBob. Captain Crunch. I don't like that. Cereal. <laughs> I think I can't pour me a shot. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I'm better now. I'm going to go first. I'm going to go first this time. Don't pour me a big shot. Don't pour me a big shot. Yeah. Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch. Okay, cool. go. Okay, go. Captain Crunch. Okay, Captain Crunch. I'm about to do the, um, you said SpongeBob. All right, um. New topic or you want to Okay, yeah. New one. topic, go. Uh, let me think, let me think. Colors. Colors, go. I'm, I'm going first? Uh, yeah, you go first. I'll pick this up. Okay. You already said blue, red. So, I can't say blue no more? Go say blue. Blue. <laughs> Yellow. Green. Orange. Purple. Turquoise. Violet. Silver. Gray. Gold. Ah, oh, damn. Shy. Hey. <laughs> I'm not as bad as I thought. I'm really good at colors. I should have um, said pink. You got on. I was about to say pink. Yeah, I, I was going to say pink next. If I would have said pink, it would have probably lost. Navy is a color too. I was going to say navy because of what you wearing. I need to stop pouring these big ass shots. That's why I said you pour me. It's a little one, huh? Because <laughs> I'm a little lit. I ain't going to lie. Me too. Mostly because I didn't eat. You want to keep playing the game? We got... <laughs> we got any other questions you want to ask? Um, basically, what do you um want people to know about what you got planned for the future? I know you said your album. Mm -hmm. But do you plan on taking on any live shows or... Any collaborations? So the main thing I want people to know, so something I take more serious than music, um, family, mm -hmm. is the most high. Yeah, I send out prayer messages Monday through Friday to over 500 people. Um, I still got to send them out for today. Do you but, do any motivational speaking? I mean, no, nah, no. Nah, I mean, that's something I would be like, if the opportunity presented itself, I'm able to speak in front of a group of people. Um, I can speak in front of a thousand. I can tell right now. That's why I was like, I'm interested for you mm -hmm. to be a part of my panel. For sure, I'm I, with that. Yeah. I'm fucking with you. I know this great thing is coming for you. Aww, you know, thank I like you. to stay connected to people where they set aside from everybody. Ain't I like the majority and they got their own thing going. You know what I I'm saying? I posted so. the other day because I really resonate with this. Like, it's the old saying. Mm -hmm. if they don't let you, if they don't give you a seat at the table, make your own table. No, 100%. And that's what I'm working on. Because I feel yeah. like when I, ever since I've been here... I feel like I've been trying to fight my way into certain spaces, and mm -hmm. I'm like, at this point, just yeah, make my just own do way. you. Yeah. People gonna gravitate. Yeah. People gonna gravitate. But you sent out motivational. Yeah, like prayer messages, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. Um, I'm I'm very spiritual. Like I, I'm all about spreading the gospels. Not only that, but just the love that lot that y'all gives us. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to be an example of love. Like I'm very. I'm very, I'm very kind. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not your typical, like, the people that know me, they know I do things for people that is like, why would you do that? But it's just like, I know this little thing, like, me giving $50, 50 to a homeless person. Right. Like, not to talk about it, because I don't like to brag about things. I'm not bragging about it, but just to give an example, like, I got $50 on me, and then I got, like, $1,000 in my account. Why, why wouldn't I give this $50 to this homeless person? Like, mm -hmm. this shit can change your night <laughs> like, no. about, like well you know and, i mean even if they don't have the most best intentions for it you exactly. know you did your part so. exactly because that's the main thing i like to try to judge it's 544 yeah but that's my main thing if if if, if anybody take, wants some motivational prayers i know there's as there's tough times going on right now 100 percent. so if you just want some motivational speeches, some motivational prayers, some just motivational words in general. Hit him up, you know? Yeah, for sure. Some, it's hard to even find people that listen nowadays. Yeah. 
And so that's something I take pride into, I listen to. Yeah, the, I'm, very I always try to put myself in other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I'm a compassionate person, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can tell, very thoughtful. But thank you mm -hmm. for coming on the for show, sure. Davo. Davo, right? Davo. Davo. I said it right. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate you. Yeah. You guys will see him on the panel because I already made my mind up. He coming sure. on the panel. I'm with it. But y'all heard of her first. I wasn't even supposed to tell y'all until it happened, but <laughs> I just want to get a little in it. Just a little something, something, something. Yeah, I won't be posting this for a little minute anyway. So by the time I have my panel up, It'll this be, will be posted right, anyway, right. like a week yeah. before. Yeah. But thank you for coming on the show. Like I sure. said, I'm your host, T Nasty, and thank you for taking a step into the closet. We will see you next time. Sure. Got a white boy on my roster. He be feeding me pasta and lobster. He just hit me up on Tuesday like we're storm bad. Let me take you shopping. I tell him, well, I'm a little busy. He said, damn, I'm your city. But anyway, it's okay. Hope you have a